All right, so I want to do a quick video. I had a water line repair uh, emergency call a couple days ago and I was getting some things kind of put away. I always end up with a bin of trash and extra parts and just trying to get things cleaned up. Um, and right now we're working on top of my uh, new joiner, uh, but it was a clear space in the shop to um, shoot a quick video. So, you know, when you go to put on a sprinkler system, a lot of times they'll tie into the house's water line. And the biggest question, okay, you know, what is it? You know, you got you could have copper, you could have a galvanized uh, line if it's an older house. Um, it could be, you know, HDP, like in front of this black tubing. It could be PEX if it's a newer water line. It could be clear, it could be blue. There's a lot of different options out there. But what I want to talk about today was high-density polyethylene or HDPE. It is pretty common, still used today. Um, been probably used for the last 35, 40 years. That's kind of a guesstimate. Um, so we'll jump into it. So what you see here are two samples. Now this one actually came off our well line. It's probably, I don't know, 35, 40 years old. I'm kind of guessing, probably from the 70s. Um, and if you compare it to a sample on the left, these are both, what I'd say, like a one inch poly um, or HDPE. You can see that the one on the left is actually thicker. If you look side by side right in the middle, the one on the left is actually thicker. And this right hand one is actually thinner. Um, so normally we say is that if I was going in to get parts, I say, hey, I got a thin wall um, poly, you know, one inch water line that I need to tap into, or maybe I just need to do a repair. Um, or if I was in, a, like I say, an HDP, I say, hey, I got, you know, like a thick wall or a 250 PSI poly. Um, and they both use somewhat similar fittings. One of the common fittings we see, like in this case here, is a, um, is a brass insert fitting. So it's a male iron pipe thread, which you can see where there's some still some remainder Teflon tape. This came out from the repair. Um, and then you can see we got two hose clamps. And that's how you secure the bar fitting into the water line to transition, say if you're coming off a meter spud or a tailpiece or into a, a house. Now the one thing I want to talk about is fittings. So this particular T here came off our well line when we put in a um, Rainbird uh, cell enabled water meter. And you can see this is plastic, and you can see that this one back here is actually a brand new um, insert by um, male pipe thread fitting. And if you look, you can see the number the number of barbs on the plastic T, and you can see the number on this brass. So it's just more clamping, more clamping area. So a lot of times the requirement is that you have to put in two clamps opposed. And I'll bring it down to the other end of this piece and I just threw a couple clamps on there there's no fitting in there but you can see the clamps are on there and they're opposed so which means is the screws such as in the case that I pulled out you can see that the screw heads are both on the same side and that would be that would be incorrect um, what we like to see up here is we like to see two clamps with opposed heads and not knowing you know a technical explanation I assume it just gives it more equal clamping um, force onto that onto the barb fitting now the other way that you can attach to a water line and this is still a thin wall if we we're doing the thick wall like this the other way you can attach this with a compression fitting now you have to know what size or what size or what pressure rating of poly you have because in some cases it will not work but just to give you an idea these are both three quarter. Move this down out of our way. These are both three quarter. This one is a brand new barb fitting, so you can see it's smaller than the one inch. And then this, that's a stiffener. And then that is actually what we call a pack joint fitting. So we take the barb one out of the picture. So a pack joint fitting, how that works is almost like if you're used to compression fitting, um, it has a collar on the outside. So if we take this part. So what happens is the pipe goes inside and you can see there's a small nipple on the side there that keeps it from going any further. So this would go, your pipe would go, this was three quarter, it would go inside and hit that nipple and stop. And then you would have your gasket and your washer, and they'll go in there one way, and once that pipe's in there, you would clamp this down, you would tighten this down, let's say a compression fitting, and then there's a built-in clamp on the back that you tighten down that's integral to this uh, pack joint fitting. 
Now the other thing that we also have when we do pack joints, and sometimes they can be found, sometimes they're they're not found, but to help reinforce the tubing, since you're using a compression fitting, you don't want to collapse it, um, it's called a stiffener. So this would go inside the water line. So if we line this up, so that will go inside your water line. It's a snug fit, obviously, still one inch line. These are all for three quarter. Um, and then you put your pack joint fitting together. So you'd have your the back half of the, of the pack joint. You have your washer and your gasket, and then this would go over that. Um, a lot of times, like their pair did, was four feet deep. And a lot of times, guys will try and use a insert fitting like this. And it's really easy um, to not to have a hard time. I guess it's really easy to have a hard time, but it's really easy um, to have mistakes happen and have a lot of problems with these. Because when you try and put this into a thick wall, like a 250 HDPE, you're going to encounter a lot of resistance. And you don't want to heat up the pipe because if it's an existing water line, um, you can cause a, you can, you can deform the pipe very, very fast and you're cutting back more, trying to put in, you know, trying to put it back in. Um, best way to insert these, in my experience, is to use a mallet. So you'd put this in, tap it in with the mallet. It won't deform the brass. If you use a, uh, just a, a regular, you know, say carpenter's hammer, you will, um, you'll tear up the threads. So, um, so pack joints are really nice. You can slip them on. They tighten down. They're a little bit more money. Um, probably about, I think it's a about double the cost, but a lot less frustrations when you're working in a deep hole or you're working in tight conditions. You don't have much to, uh, much room to move around. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. Um, you know, it's just my experience. There's nothing really technical about it, but it may be able to help someone else down the road.